everyone and welcome to my video. I've been um, having a go at mixing greys. This can be tricky so I wanted to make a video for you all to make it a little bit easier. So let's get started. So as you can see I've had several of my palettes out trying different combinations and I have produced a chart which I will send you um, of nine different greys that we can mix. I'll show you the process now. In this section I'm going to concentrate on showing you how to mix uh, two greys using three primary colours. So we're going to be using ultramarine blue, cadmium red and cadmium yellow to mix that grey. And to mix this grey, we're going to use cerulean blue, crimson and lemon yellow. This grey in the centre here, that's Payne's grey and it's often a common colour that you may well have in your watercolour set. Um, but this shows you how close you can get to Payne's grey by using your three primaries. So let's get started on that. So first of all, I'm going to add a little bit of water to my palette and we're going to start off with this top grey here so the ultramarine blue this is a French ultramarine and to mix a grey tone you want um, a good amount of blue to start off with as a base so adding plenty of blue there And next I'm going to add the cadmium red. So this is going to make a sort of a purple kind of colour first of all. Keep adding red until I'm happy with the sort of purple that we get. So that's actually taking it fairly grey if you look. Uh, there's the cadmium red of course is quite a warm colour. Um, so that's why we've, we've resulted in this sort of deep blue shade. And then we want to add a little bit, just a small amount, of the cadmium yellow. And that turns that colour to a nice grey tone. So I'm going to start off by popping that colour in my box here. So that's a nice sort of flat grey, there's nothing special about it, fairly easy to mix. Depending of course on how much of the red you put in versus how much yellow, you might get a slightly brown colour. If that happens, add more blue, um, if I show you that actually. If we go with a little bit more yellow for example, it starts to turn kind of a green colour. So, to bring it back, we'll add a bit more red and then back to the blue and you'll need quite a lot of blue to counteract this brown. Okay, so that's counteracted it but it's taken it slightly more blue than we want it. So we just start again. So first of all we add some of the red. Taking it nicely back to a grey. Um, in fact, we don't need to add any yellow to that, that's perfect. Um, and if I just show you underneath, it's exactly the same grey pretty much as the one I previously mixed. Okay, so that is using our three warm colours in the palette the ultramarine blue, cadmium red, and cadmium yellow. The second grey we're mixing is going to turn out pretty similar in colour. Um, but this time we're going to use the cool colours in the palette, starting off with the uh, the cerulean blue, sorry. So let's work this cerulean blue up. Now, the cerulean blue, of course, is less strong. It's, it's much weaker in 
colour, it doesn't have as much intensity as the French Ultramarine Blue, so you want to make sure that you add enough of that blue to the water to give it a decent strength. Okay. And then we do the same. So first of all, add a touch of red. Now crimson is extremely strong in comparison to all the uh, cerulean blue. So you only want to add a very small amount. So little bits at a time. So keep going back. Dab off your brush because you don't want to weaken the mix. There we go. Look, look, see how strong that red was. That was a tiny sweep of the red, the crimson and it's taken it to a nice purple. So that's what we wanted, a nice purple color. And then to counteract the purple, if you think about the color wheel, opposite purple on the color wheel is yellow. So what the yellow does is it neutralizes that purple and that's what gives us the gray color. So we take a little bit of the lemon yellow. It's a bit dry on my palette, so I'm just going to add a bit of water. So again, a little bit at a time. You don't want to go too far with this, otherwise you're gonna kind of go back to the start again. Um, I think that's neutralized it quite well. Let's add a touch more of the blue. Because it's quite a warm gray. So if we add a bit more of the blue, there we go, and we get a nice grey colour, so you can paint that one on here. So those are two greys mixed using our three primaries and we have, um, even though we've used a warm colour primary set on the left here, and a cool primary set on the right, we've kind of pretty much come out with a very similar grey. So they sort of neutralize, neutralize each other and, and we get that lovely grey. Now if I show you what the Payne's grey is like in relation to those two greys, I just get a bit of that Payne's grey going. Um, if I just show you the Payne's grey down here, very similar to those two colours we've mixed. So it takes a little bit of practice to mix a grey from the three primaries, um, but if you do it slowly and you start off with the blue, add the red to make a purple, and then a little bit of yellow, a touch of yellow if it's not enough, a touch more yellow, you'll eventually get a nice sort of flat lid grey. So guys, if you are enjoying my video and finding my tips helpful and you're learning things from it, then why not like the video and subscribe too and then you'll be notified when I produce any new videos and upload them to YouTube. Great, thank you. In the next part of the video, I'm going to show you how to mix six more greys, this time using secondary colours along with a primary. So this makes quite interesting um, changes to the grey. So for example, if I bring this tester strip across, um, using permanent rose in this one gives a lovely uh, kind of purple violet tint to the tone. And we use a dark zine violet in this one and lemon yellow, and that creates a sort of um, a pinkish tint. Um, and this one using a green gives a lovely kind of slate Gray. So let's have a look at doing these six more colours. So in the, the top section here, I am going to use a different green, well, I'm using sap green and viridian green along with um, other colours to produce these greys. So let's go ahead and start. So let's start with this one then. So sap green, which I have at the top of my palette here, or the bottom of my palette should I say. Um, starting with the green, popping it down. Okay, let's really get some pigment in there so that we make some nice deep greys. 
And along with that, I'm using the dioxazine violet, which again, that's quite a dark color too. So um, it will make a nice deep gray for all. I have a little tester strip here, which I can just test on before I put them down. So that makes quite a nice, if I smudge it around a bit, makes quite a nice gray. I'm happy with that. So that's the sap green and the dioxazine violet. Very quick and easy to mix that gray. But you may not have those colors in your palette. If not, if you only have the primaries, then I've shown you how to use those. Just takes a little bit of practice and a little bit of time to get the different proportions of each color correct to get that gray tone. So if you do um, a practice session, um, it's great as a warm up if you're about to start painting. Um, yeah, get yourself going on those. So the next one is Viridian Green, which is here on my palette. Now I hardly ever use Viridian Green sort of on its own without mixing something else with it. It's such um, a vivid, strong, um, a kind of acidic kind of green. Um, so I prefer more natural greens and in fact I'm going to do a video for you in my next um, monthly newsletter purely on how to mix natural greens so um, look out for that. So that's the Viridian and to that I'm going to be mixing permanent magenta which is this one on my palette here. Mm. More. So just keep going bit by bit gradually until I'm happy with kind of it is changing now. Let's just wash that off my brush. So this permanent magenta is a gorgeous colour, it's great for flower paintings, really, really pretty. Just keep going with that magenta. And we're getting there, starting to change. Always best to do bit by bit, and then you don't go too far in this mix. Now that is a lovely, let's do a test. But I'm pretty sure I'm happy with that. Yeah, that is gorgeous. It's got quite a, a blue, a deep blue smoky grey. So let's add that one in here. So that's the Viridian Green with the Permanent Magenta. That gives us that lovely grey blue colour. Gorgeous. So the next one is, we're sticking with the Viridian Green, but this time we're going to add Crimson. So let's get that grey off my brush. So important guys, always clean your brush in between. Um, so starting with the green, that lovely Viridian. It is a gorgeous colour, it's just that when I do landscapes or anything like that, uh, it's, it's just find it's very, it's such a man-made fake kind of green, if, if you know what I mean. It's not got, warm, rich, rusty kind of tones to it. If you add red, which I always do, uh, you'll find you'll get a much more natural colour. So um, although I don't use it usually on its own in my palette, I will mix reds with it. So there's our Viridian and this time we're adding Crimson, uh, which is here on my palette. Get that Crimson going, it's a bit dry, so easy to activate it there. So immediately get a lovely dark colour, which is beautiful. Now I'm pretty sure that's still a bit green, we'll test it. I think we need to go more with the crimson. Yeah, just a touch more, it's still on slightly on the green side. So I'm not going to do too much, just a little bit. Get that colour off the brush first. Let's go a little bit more red. There we go. Oops, I touched it to more of a grey there. I didn't really want to do that, but yeah, I'm happy with that now. So let's get that on here. So this is the Viridian Green with the Crimson. 
It's the alizarin crimson that I use. Okay, so that makes a gorgeous dark grey colour. So that can be really useful in the paintings. Okay, let me just mop this up a little. Um, in fact, we're moving on to my next section of parts. So it doesn't really matter that it's mixing there, so I'm going to ignore that. Move on to this section now. Um, the first colour I'm going to mix is using a base of turquoise. Again, I love this colour. It's so pretty. Um, it's beautiful. I like to use it in my sort of semi-abstract paintings. I think it's a really, really nice green blue. And because it has those green tones in it, when we add the red, it tends to go grey. So it's perfect for this. So there we have lovely turquoise. Clean that off. And we're mixing this with our cadmium red. So if we were going to, oh, excuse my mobile there. If we were going to add crimson instead, it would tend to go much more um, purple rather than grey. So we're going with the cadmium red. Okay. And the cadmium red is a little dry. I should have activated these folks. Bear with me. Uh, just a quick squirt of water on top of your paints will get them going in your palette and um, speed things up a little bit for you. So it's changing, we're not quite there yet. Here we go, it's starting, starting to go now. Lovely. Pretty sure we're okay at that, let's give it a quick test. Yeah, that's nice, really nice. So that is the turquoise base with cadmium red. And as you can see, it's quite quite similar to the sap green and the dark green violet above it. Um, if you add a little less of the red, you would still have a slightly more turquoise tone. So depending on whether you're using this for shadows or whatever effects you want to create, with the grey you might want to use less red possibly um, but this is what it's all about trial and error testing and playing about with your colours knowing what you can create with your personal colour palette so I'm aware you may not have all these colours in your palette but there might be one or two that you do have have a play around with those and see what you can create so the next one is cerulean blue and permanent rose so I'm going to go back to my little palette just to get some of my cerulean blue because cerulean blue I have in this larger palette, it's my old palette, it's not, um, it's not a professional paint so it's not as strong that cerulean blue, it takes a lot of cerulean blue to actually, uh, it takes a lot of paint to get the pigment right so I'm just using my professional um, artist quality paint there. So there's my cerulean blue and we're mixing it with permanent rose and again my permanent rose or oh, in fact I do have some of that on this large palette so we'll go with this. So again this is uh, artist quality permanent rose. Now we're going to get quite a pale purple grey with these two colours which is really pretty. Um, that's beautiful. So that is definitely a purple as opposed to a grey so what I'm going to do is just take it back a little bit by adding more of the cerulean blue so just bear with me a second let's get that blue mix that there on the side and let's go with that here so cerulean blue and the permanent rose gives us this lovely grey blue colour, very pretty grey. Um, again it could be great for shadows across flowers, things like that. Um, in fact just a quick tip for you, if you are for example painting a pink flower and you use permanent rose, what I always tend to do is try and use that colour mixed with a second colour to create the shadow colour that you use. 
That way your painting will have a really nice harmony to it because the, the pink is also in the shadow colour and it just ties the whole painting together so you might want to bear that in mind next time you're painting. Uh, the final grey is dark sazine violet and lemon yellow so let's have a look at that. So here's my violet which is a really strong colour so I don't want to do don't want to use too much. There's my violet and lemon yellow. This is going to take a little bit of getting going. Put that up there. And there it goes. Now, what happens here again? I think I mentioned this earlier. Um, the purple, obviously, opposite the purple on the colour wheel is yellow so it knocks that back if you like um, neutralizes the purple let's just add a touch more purple to that bring it back a little bit there's slightly brown there so a bit more purple this is the kind of color i want to go for this sort of muted purple colour. Let's see what I've got so far. Let's try it on here. Yeah, it's still a little bit brown, so I'm going to go back in with a touch more of the purple, just to bring it back up. That lemon yellow was obviously stronger than I thought. <laughs> Added too much of it there, but this is this is how it goes. This is what you have to do at home. You have to just... There we go. That's, that's much more like it. Um, you have to just play around with these things. Be really patient with yourself. Um, Give yourself plenty of time, okay? So that's a really good tip. Don't think, right, I've got to do this in 15 minutes, 10 minutes, whatever. Really give yourself plenty of time to, to play about. Um, so there we have nine different greys. Um, that one's a really pretty pink kind of colour that we've just done there with the dark sitting violet. Again, that would look really nice in a flower painting. That would work really well as a shadow colour. Um, so we have used primaries to initially mix the greys, which are very similar to Payne's grey. Um, and a Payne's grey, of course, is quite neutral, which is, is perfect. Um, and then what you can do is, if you wanted a slightly more blue grey, then you'd start off by mixing this very flat grey with the three primaries, and then you might add a touch more blue to it, just to get the kind of colour that you're after. Um, so we've got nine lovely greys mixed there. And um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this. And is that... <laughs> Eight. We've got eight greys. I'm missing one somewhere. Where? Which grey am I missing? Green, green and crimson, magenta. Ah, uh, don't magenta. No, I've got that one. There is one. Green, green and crimson. Yes, sap green, dark green, violet, turquoise, cadmium red, cerulean blue. Oh, it's okay. I think I may have doubled up on my sample, so that's fine. <laughs> Sorry, folks. I'm confusing myself here. So we have got two, four, six, eight different greys there. And um, it's because, obviously, I'd used the Payne's grey. That was our ninth grey. So, yeah. So Payne's grey, it's great in your palette as um, a kind of... If you're doing a quick painting and you haven't got time maybe to mix your greys, then Payne's Grey is a lovely colour. You can also add other colours to it to make it more blue or more purple. Um, but the other colours that I've shown you there are all mixed on your palette and uh, have a little go at that. Have a practice and see what you can create. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Once again, if you have enjoyed it, give it a like for me. I really appreciate that and uh, possibly subscribe as well to the channel that way you'll get a notification each time i provide a new tutorial for you thanks very much and have a great day folks